Here is the fourth part of this lecture and in this lecture we shall study about organic and proboscide solar cells. First in the list is the disenticide solar cells. These were discovered in the late 1960s. Some organic dyes, when illuminated, can generate electricity at oxide electrodes in the electrochemical cells. Early studies were biomimetic or bionic approach that is by simulating the primary processes in photosynthesis with chlorophyll extracted from spinach. Therefore, disenticide solar cells are also called artificial leaves and the process artificial photosynthesis. A dye is a colored substance which chemically bonds to the surface. The majority of natural dyes are derived from plant sources such as roots, berries, bark, leaves, wood, fungi and lichens. Most of the dyes utilized in the dye synthesized solar cells are synthetic nowadays. The dyes constitute the main colored compounds in the plants. For example, anthocyanins as shown in the picture. These can be easily isolated from different plant resources or can be synthesized artificially. In the bottom picture, the dyes have been applied to the glass surface. The dyes are highly conjugated molecules and show good electron transfer properties. The efficiency of the dye synthesized solar cells is low indeed as compared to the other solar cells which are silicon wafer or amorphous silicon thin film solar cells, CIGS, cadmium telluride or multijunctional solar cells. Also, these are less stable for longer duration, but these are far easier to fabricate. Under standard set of fabrication and operation, the maximum efficiency a disenticide solar cell has been demonstrated to be 11.9%. For utilization in a solar cell, the dye is adsorbed onto the surface of nanostructured titanium dioxide particles smeared on a rigid and flexible substrate surface. Light with high enough energy excites the electrons in the dye molecule and the latter are infused into the semiconducting titanium dioxide particles and then transported out of the cell to the external circuit. The positive holes are left in the dye molecules. Separation of excited electrons and holes create a voltage and the electricity can be produced. The dye synthesized solar cells are also called Grestel cells discovered by Michael Grestel and Brian Oregon in, 19, in 1991. The first cells were only capable of using light at the ultraviolet and blue end of the spectrum. By the turn of century, advances in technology were able to broaden the frequencies in which these cells were able to respond. The most efficient of the dyes were simply known as black dyes due to their very dark colors. For a dye synthesized solar cells, Light is absorbed by a sanitizer which is anchored to the surface of a wide band semiconductor. Charge separation takes place at the interface via photo-induced electron injection from the dye into the conduction band of the semiconductor. Upon absorption of photon, a dye molecule adsorbed to the surface of titanium dioxide 
gets oxidized and the excited electron is injected into the nanostructured TiO2. Among the first kind of promising synthesizers were polypyridyl compounds of ruthenium and osmium. The examples are given below. These were the compounds very extensively investigated. Among the natural dyes were shisho leaf pigments, black rice pigments, rochella or natural anthocyanins or henna pigments. In this picture, the ad absorption spectra of different photosynthesizer molecules are shown and light harvesting efficiency LHE can be calculated as the equation shown here where A in lambda is the absorbance of the sample at a specific wavelength. LHE or light harvesting efficiency increases with concentration of the dye extract. Here in this slide and next few slides, you can see some very well-known photosynthesizer molecules. An important component of the dye synthesized solar cells is redox electrolyte. It is basically applied to replenish the electrons lost by the dye molecules. So as the electrical circuit is completed between the electrodes. The redox electrolyte contains I minus I3 minus redox ions. Other redox electrolytes in common usage are sodium iodide, lithium iodide, tetraalkyl ammonium iodide, etc. Usually, a mixture of iodide salts are dissolved in non-protonic solvents such as acetonitrile, propylene carbonate and propionitrile to make an electrolyte. The cell performance is greatly dependent upon the age of electron ion conductivity in the electrolyte and viscosity of the electrolyte is hence crucial. Here are the chemical structure of some more electrolytes. And here is the list of materials required for making a dye synthesized solar cells in a laboratory. These are sensitizing dye, titania nanoparticles, an electrolyte, and below are the pictures of the chemical structures and the morphology of titania nanoparticles. A modern dye synthesized solar cell is composed of a porous layer of titanium dioxide nanoparticles covered with a molecular dye that absorbs sunlight like the chlorophyll in green leaves. The titanium dioxide is immersed under an electrolyte solution above which a platinum based catalyst is placed. As in a conventional alkaline battery, an anode the titanium dioxide and a cathode, the platinum, are placed on either side of a liquid conductor, which is called electrolyte. Here is a pictorial representation of working mechanism of a dye synthesized solar cell. Light passes through the transparent electrode surface into the dye layer, where 
it can excite electrons. The electrons then flow into titanium dioxide and flow towards the transparent electrode and collected by the external circuit for powering a load. After flowing through the external circuit, the electrons are reintroduced into the cell via a metal electrode at the back side where it enters into the electrolyte layer. The electrolyte molecule undergoes redox process and replenishes electrons to the dye molecules. In a traditional silicon solar cell, the silicon serves both the purposes, namely source of photoelectrons as well as providing the electrical field to separate the charges and create current. On the other hand, in a disynthesized solar cell, the bulk of the semiconductor is utilized for charge transfer alone and the photoelectrons are provided from a separate photosensitive dye. Charge separation occurs at the surfaces between the dye, semiconductor and the electrolyte. The structure of a dye synthesized solar cell is hence complicated. We can see part by part here. Here we can see the basic skeleton of a dye synthesized solar cell. There is a thick smear of wide band gap semiconductor or titanium dioxide on a glass surface or ITO. The dye molecules are adsorbed onto this titanium dioxide and electrolyte is applied on the top of it and another electrode is attached to complete the structure. The electrolyte undergoes redox reaction to facilitate the mobility of electrons and ions between the electrodes. Light is absorbed by the dye molecule and electrons are generated, leaving behind holes which can accept electrons from the electrolytes undergoing redox reactions. The electrons are transferred to the conduction band of the semiconductor material. The electrons move from the electrolyte and regenerate it. The electrons are transferred to the external circuit from the semiconductor material and utilized by the load. The voltage is determined by the titania and the redox couple in the electrolyte. In this slide, the interfaces have been shown in detail. The surface of titania is corrugated and dye molecules are spread onto its surface, generating enough decent number of electrons to facilitate the applications. In the second picture, iodide molecules furnishes electrons from oxidation, which replenishes the holes in the dye molecule and themselves undergo reduction reaction upon receiving electrons from the back electrode thus completing the circuit. The mechanism and chemical reaction equations have been illustrated here. The first step is the excitation process where photons create excitants. 
and the second is the injection process where the electrons are created and holes are left behind. In the third process, the production of electrical energy is generated. In the next step, the regeneration of dye molecules occur and the electron recapture reaction finally completes the process. Nanoparticles of the oxide are deposited by screen printing onto a glass or flexible plastic support covered with a transparent conducting layer of fluorine doped tin oxide, FTO or tin doped indium oxide, ITO. Each particle is then coated with a monolayer of sensitizer or a quantum dot formed by self-assembly from a dye solution or a staining solution. The first dye synthesized solar cell made in the laboratory used a titanium sheet covered with a high surface area fractal titanium dioxide film that was produced by a sol gel method. The most widely used nanocrystalline semiconductor oxide electrode in the dye synthesized solar cell as an electron collector to support a molecular or quantum dot sensitizer is titanium dioxide. Although other wide band gap semiconductor oxides such as zinc oxide, tin oxide or niobium pentoxide have also been employed. These semiconductor oxides have high surface area which helps in sensitizer binding and efficient solar harvesting. The 50 to 70 percent porosity allows fissile diffusion of redox mediators within the film to react with surface bound sensitizers. The density of unfilled acceptor states can be widely and reversibly tuned in energy for increasing light and electrical energy conversion efficiencies. And a scanning electron micrograph of a sintered mesoscopic titanium dioxide film supported on an FTO glass is shown here in the picture. The photovoltaic performance can be defined in terms of efficiency and the mathematical equations have been summarized here. The first one is photon energy to electricity conversion efficiency as defined by Grester is eta. Under full solar spectrum irradiation with photon flux I0 is equal to 100 milliwatt per square centimeter with air mass 1.5. The equation is shown below where JSC is the short circuit current, BOC is the open circuit voltage and FF is the fill factor of the solar cell which is calculated by multiplying both the photo current and the voltage resulting in maximum electrical power delivered by the cell. The incident photon to current conversion efficiency IPC is given by the second equation. Dark current in dye synthesized solar cell is mainly due to the loss of the injected electron from the nanostructured wide band gap semiconductor say titanium dioxide to iodine 3 minus the whole carrier and solution electrolyte is given by the third equation. The dye synthesized solar cells are often complained for its low stability. The crucial point here is its electrolyte material. As soon as it replenishes the electrons to the synthesized molecule the circuit remains active and the cell stability is enhanced. In conclusion, fast recovery of the sensitizer is important for attaining long-term stability. Also, long-lasting charge separation is a very important key factor to the performance of solar cells.
The main issue related to the disynthesized solar cells is the evaporation or drying of the electrolyte solution, barring it from functioning. Another problem is the possibility of leakage out of its own viscosity. There had been introduction of innovative electrolytes from time to time. Some of these are listed here. The disynthesized solar cell research is further facilitated with computation and simulation to investigate the kinetics and mechanism of the dye diffusion. In dye cells, optical and electronic properties of sensitizer or dye molecules using ab initio methods. Furthermore, simulation of ultraviolet spectra can also be investigated to predict absorption, wavelength, and oscillator strength. The information is useful in predicting the active material or sites in the sensitized molecule which performs. Computation and simulation helps in calculation of the homo-lumo gaps which is an important parameter and the information is utilized in synthesizing organic molecules. An efficient charge separating state can be tuned by substituting electron donating and electron withdrawing groups to create an efficient dye or photosynthesizer molecule. Furthermore, the geometric and electronic structures can be optimized to create a suitably optimized molecule. Coupling of the electron with the semiconductor such as titanium dioxide and the light harvesting efficiency can also be evaluated before the dyes are sensitized. Simulation of the degradation process induced by light, it is essential to gain insight into the chemical reactions in the excited state. This is difficulty to study by experiment, but the mechanism can be elucidated with the help of quantum chemical computation. The different compounds of a practically utilizing disynthesized solar cell is shown here. The components are counter electrode, which is metal or non-metal, with high surface area, high catalytic activity and high stability. The second one is sealing jacket. The third layer is electrolyte, which is a stable redox potential, high interaction with dye, high stability and good solvent. The fourth layer is the organic dye with wide range absorption, high absorption coefficient, high anchoring property, high stability and speedy recovery, optimal redox potential. The next layer is titanium dioxide nanoparticle layer which is working electrode with high porosity, high stability and high conductivity. And the final layer is transparent conducting glass with high conductivity and high transparency. Now we shall discuss about quantum dots and how it revolutionized the field of disynthesized solar cells. In a quantum dot solar cell, quantum dots are used as photosensitizers. This can replace the usage of bulk materials such as silicon, which is expensive to purify and process. Other bulk materials such as copper, indium, gallium, selenide or cadmium telluride which are poisonous and cause hazards. Efficiency is rather low, but suitable for home appliances. The efficiency of a typical quantum dot solar cell is 7.0 to 8.7%. Quantum dots are nano-sized semiconductors of 2 to 10 nanometer size and appear with tunable band gap properties. As we can see in the picture, 
different size quantum dots emit and absorb different bands of the visible spectra. Quantum dots when excited by electricity emit light. On the other hand, these are sensitive to light and can be excited by photons. Quantum dots can be used to boost the efficiency of photovoltaic solar cells or in nanoscale photo detectors, for example, imaging, fiber optical networking, etc. Quantum dots have very specific properties. As we can see here in the picture, as the size of the quantum dot increases, the emitted wavelengths shift from blue to red part of the spectrum. Here is the correlation between size and band gap shown. Larger is the size of a quantum dot, smaller is the band gap and vice versa. The correlation between size and emission wavelength is shown here. Smaller dots emit blue light of the spectrum and larger dots emit red color of the spectrum. Here we see an elaborative representation of size and band gap correlation. What is so special about the quantum dots? The most striking feature is the size of the quantum dots can be tuned to absorb energy from the entire solar spectrum and hence the efficiency can be increased. The fabrication of a quantum dot solar cell remains the same as the dye synthesized solar cell. The quantum dots are applied on to the top surface of a semiconductor material that is titanium dioxide and supplied with an electrolyte and the electrodes. The fabrication of a quantum dot solar cell remains the same as dye synthesized solar cell. The quantum dots are applied on to the top surface of the semiconductor material, titanium dioxide, and supplied with electrolyte and the electrodes. The problem arises from lowering of the band gap of the bulk titanium dioxide and voltage, which can be resolved by tuning the size of the quantum dots. By fine-tuning the size of the polydispersed quantum dots so that a wide difference in the band gap is maintained as we can see in this picture. Here is an experimental example of the same. 
where the finely tuned cadmium sulfide quantum dots help in maintaining the wide band gap resulting into high efficiency. Next in the list is infrared plastic solar cells, which is capable of producing electricity even during the cloudy days. It works on the principle of nanotechnology and absorbs solar energy efficiently. The heart of a plastic solar cell is a 200 nanometer thick film. It requires semiconductor nanorods of dimension 7 nanometer by 60 nanometer. It consists of cadmium selenide nanorods and blended with P3HD that is poly 3 hexyl thiophene. The heat is absorbed by the cells and are used to move electrons freely forming electric current. Plastic solar cells are quite a lot useful in the coming future. This is because of the large number of advantages it has got. Some of the major advantages are they are considered to be 30% more efficient when compared to conventional solar cells. They are more efficient and more practical in application. Traditional solar cells are bulky panels that is very compact. Conventional solar cells are only used for large applications with big budgets, but the plastic solar cells are feasible as they can be even sewn into fabric thus having vast applications. Flexible roller processed solar cells have the potential to turn the sun's power into clean, green, consistent source of energy. Organic photovoltaic cells, also plastic solar cells, are a type of polymer solar cell that uses organic electronics, that is conductive organic polymers or small organic molecules for light absorption and charge transport to produce electricity from sunlight by the photovoltaic effect. Such type of organic solar cells are low production costs. Molecular engineering, for example, changing the length and functional groups of polymers can change the energy gap which allows chemical change in these materials. The optical absorption coefficient of organic molecules is high, so a large amount of light can be absorbed with a small amount of materials. Most of the organic photovoltaic cells are polymer solar cells. The main disadvantage associated with organic photovoltaic cells are low efficiency as much as 10.7% as shown here, low stability and low strength compared to inorganic photovoltaic cells. Organic solar cells are under active research as there is immense potential of creating new and newer molecules which can enhance the efficiency of the solar cell. Some of the potential organic compounds are shown here. Here is an example of the structure of single layered organic photovoltaic cell. The structure shows top contact, bottom contact, substrate, active layer containing donor acceptor blend. Between the electrode materials, ITO metal, and the second electrode 
एल्यूमिनियम और मैग्नीशियम एंड कैल्शियम देर इज सैंडविच ऑर्गेनिक इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मटेरियल द स्मॉल मॉलिक्यूल ऑल द पॉलिमर मॉलिक्यूल दिस कंसिस्ट ऑफ मैग्नीशियम पिथालोसाइन इन एम जी पी सी विच एग्जिबिट फोटो वोल्टेज ऑफ टू हंड्रेड मिली वोल्ट द एल्यूमिनियम मैग्नीशियम पिथालोसाइन इन सिल्वर सेल विथ फोटो वोल्टेक एफिशियंसी ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन परसेंट अंडर इलुमिनेशन एट सिक्स नाइनटी नैनोमीटर्स अनदर कॉम्बिनेशन एल्यूमिनियम पॉली थ्री निथाइल थाफीन प्लेटिनम सेल एक्सिबिट एन एक्सटर्नल क्वांटम ईल्ड ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट वन सेवन परसेंट एंड ओपन सर्किट वोल्टेज ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट फोर वोल्ट्स ये टनेदर कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ एल्यूमिनियम पॉलीएसिटाइलिन ग्राफाइट विथ एन ओपन सर्किट वोल्टेज ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट थ्री वोल्ट एंड अ चार्ज कलेक्शन एफिशियंसी ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट देर इज ऑल्सो रिसर्च ऑन लिक्विड इंक्स कंटेनिंग रेयर अर्थ एलिमेंट्स विच कैन प्रोवाइड स्टेबल ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट एंड ट्रांजिशन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स This slide summarizes the different categories working on the principle of solar cells. Up conversion or ETU that is energy transfer up conversion materials include lanthanide doped materials erbium ytterbium holmium or a combination of any one of these. Taking advantage of their luminescence to convert infrared radiation to visible light. the second category is light absorbing dyes which are utilized in dye synthesized solar cells for example ruthenium metallo organic dye deposited onto the nanoparticulate titanium dioxide next is the quantum dots based on crystal cell or dye synthesized solar cell architecture in the organic or polymer solar cells polyphenylene vinylene and copper phthalocyanin which is a blue or green organic pigment is used besides this carbon fullerenes and fullerene derivatives such as pcbm is also used the main issues with the single layer polymer cells are low efficiencies and low voltage which often result in reunion of electrons and holes without producing electricity to overcome this problem encountered in single layer organic photovoltaic cell multiple layer photovoltaic cells are being researched on the single layer polymer photovoltaic cell have low quantum efficiency less than 1% and lower power conversion efficiencies of less than 0.1% the electric field resulting from the difference between the two conductive electrodes is seldom sufficient to split the excitons often the electrons recombine with the holes without reaching the electrode in multiple layered photovoltaic cell there are two layers between the conductive electrodes the two layered materials are chosen in such a way so that there can be maintained an electric field is strong enough to keep the excitons split from reunion to the holes the material types are electron donor and electron acceptor the latter has higher electron affinity and higher ionization potential there is an intermediate zone or interface between the two layers also called as planar donor acceptor heterojunction where electrostatic forces exist in this schematic representation the functioning of multiple layer organic photovoltaic cell has been demonstrated in the first step excitons are produced as a response to photons incidence on the cell surface the excitons migrate from donor to acceptor layer the excitons splitting takes place in the second step in the third step transport of charges takes place and formation of a heterojunction appear in contrast 
In the fourth step, the electrons are collected at the anode and holes at the opposite electrode. Here is a list of selected donor polymer utilized in all polymer blends for bulk heterojunction solar cells. And here is the list of selected accepted polymers used in all polymer blends for bulk heterojunction solar cells. The main issues encountered in bulk heterojunction photovoltaic solar cells is limited diffusion, which is in the order of 10 nanometers. The order for most excitants to diffuse to the interface of layers and split into carriers, the layer thickness should be in the same range as the diffusion length. However, a polymer layer typically needs a thickness of at least 100 nanometer to absorb enough light. At such large thickness, only a small function of excitants can reach the heterojunction surface. Now we shall see in brief about dispersed junction photovoltaic cell. As we can see in the picture, the donor acceptor molecules are randomly oriented in the bulk zone. Fullerenes and particularly P60BM and its C70-based homologue have been the most investigated acceptors in the bulk heterojunction organic photovoltaics and utilized to improve the polymer donor design rules and better understand or optimize fabrication processes. There are several reasons for the supremacy of fullerenes in this field, including favorable LUMO energy, reversible electrochemical reduction, excellent electron transport characteristics, and anisotropic charge transport. In this category, three prominent types are worth mentioning, namely discrete heterojunction, bulk heterojunction, and graded heterojunction. In discrete heterojunction, the donor acceptor layers are separate distinctly. In the bulk heterojunction, the donor and acceptor molecules are mixed. In the graded heterojunction, the electron, donor, and acceptor are mixed in such a way that a gradient is gradual. The working mechanism of the bulk heterojunction photovoltaic cells in all these categories and types are same. In discrete heterojunction photovoltaic cell, a three layer, two acceptor and one donor, fullerene free stack achieved a conversion efficiency of 8.4%. The implementation produced high open circuit voltages and absorption in visible spectra and high short circuit currents. Quantum efficiency was above 75% between 400 nanometer and 720 nanometer wavelengths with an open circuit voltage of around 1 volt. In graded heterojunction photovoltaic cells, the electron donor and acceptor are mixed in such a way that the gradient is gradual and this architecture combines the short electron travel distance in the dispersed heterojunction with the advantage of the charge gradient of the bilayer technology.
In recent years, graphene-based solar cells have been reported to furnish a greater efficiency of 15.6%. In this type of photovoltaic cells, a wafer of silicon coated with a layer of graphene doped with trifluoromethane sulfonyl amide has been tested. In 2012, researchers from the University of Florida reported a record of 8.6% of efficiency for a prototype solar cell consisting of a wafer of silicon coated with a layer of graphene doped with trifluoromethane sulfonylamide. Now, another team is claiming a new record efficiency of 15.6% for a graphene-based solar cell by ditching the silicon altogether. Next in the list is pervoskite photovoltaic solar cells. The pervoskite is calcium titanium oxide mineral composed of calcium titanates that is CaTiO3. Pervoskites are minerals having similar structure. The general chemical formula for pervoskite compound is ABX, where A and B are two cations of very different sizes, and X is an anion that bonds with both. The A atoms are larger than the B atoms. The ideal cubic symmetry structure has the B cation in six-fold coordination surrounded by an octahedron of anions and the A cation in 12-fold cuboctahedral coordination. Here in this slide, we can see the two categories of pervoskites photovoltaic cells, namely sensitized pervoskite solar cell and thin film pervoskite solar cell. In the sensitized pervoskite solar cell, there is an active layer consisting of a layer of mesoporous titanium dioxide, which is coated with the pervoskite absorber. The active layer is contacted with an N-type material for electron extraction and a P-type material for hole extraction. The figure B shows schematic of a thin film pervoskite solar cell. In this architecture, in which just a flat layer of pervoskite is sandwiched between two selective contacts. The picture C shows charge generation and extraction in the sensitized architecture. After light absorption in the pervoskite absorber, the photo-generated electron is injected into the mesoporous titanium dioxide through which it is extracted. The concomitantly generated hole is transferred to the P-type material. Charge generation and extraction in the thin film architecture is shown in figure D. After light absorption, both charge generation as well as charge extraction occurs in the pervoskite layer. The mechanism is already a familiar one as discussed in the previous slides as in disynthesized solar cells. Next in the list is the plasmonic solar cells. Metal nanoparticles are excellent light absorbers with tunable absorption properties. Such metal nanostructures can convert incident sunlight to charge carriers when placed inside a PN heterojunction. Recently, the core metal shell dielectric nanoparticles called plasmons 
has demonstrated a zero backward scattering with enhanced forward scattering on silicon substrate when the surface plasmon is located in the front part of the solar cell. Here are the two different solar cells which are being recently studied. The one is multilayered bio hybrid solar cells. A bio hybrid solar cell is a solar cell made using a combination of organic matter, photosystem one and inorganic matter. And the other type is nanocrystal solar cell with titanium dioxide dye and electrolyte interface. The mechanism is the same as the dye synthesized solar cell. In the recent years, nanowire based photovoltaic cells are being researched on. These nanowires made of cadmium telluride and cadmium sulfide show very versatile structure and enhance electron transfer. Now we shall continue to the part 5 and the last part of this lecture.